Hey there guys, Andrew Maxim up here from artistsverb.info and I've got something really special for you tonight. Now first of all, allow me to extend the most heartfelt thank you to everyone who was so kind to share their positive feedback on the desert project. Now since I saw quite a few people interested in the technology behind it, I thought I should not only give you a closer look at it, but just downright hand it over to you. That's right, in the description to this video you'll find a link to the package that contains examples of procedural materials running on UDK with all the material functions and example textures absolutely free of charge. Right now I'm about to walk you through the functionality of the shaders and give you an overview of efficient gradient map productions. So if you feel like it you just might want to pause the video, download the package and follow along with me. So right now in front of you, you can see the package I put together for you guys. And basically what it has is an example mesh, a couple of textures for you, and a bunch of materials. And basically the materials are the gist of this package, the most interesting part for you. And they're also separated into two groups, which is the base materials, the material functions used there, and the instances. I like to keep my functions separated so you can reuse them later on and, and hopefully some of those functions might just come in handy for you the way they are right here. So yeah, uh, basically I've pre-made the four material instances for the guys and girls that aren't really familiar with the whole shader editing thing. And, and basically they have all the parameters you might need exposed. So you should hopefully have no trouble creating your own procedural material and never even opening the material editor because the instant editor would be quite enough for you. Now for those of you guys that are familiar with shader editing, I hope that it won't be much trouble browsing through the base shaders that I supplied because I tried to keep them pretty well structured and documented and commented. So they should be pretty transparent for you. Now let's just go quickly through the instances and the types of materials provided. So basically, number one that we see here is the mini instance, and basically it describes a material built upon the gradient mapping mini function. And here you can see we have a leaf, which is mass transparent as you can see here. And basically, as you can see from the parameters you have, it uses only two colors to color the object. It uses only two colors to color the object and, and it gives you some of the basic controls such as tiling, specular brightness, specular power or glossness. And the last one is pretty interesting. It's called diffuse for spec desaturation. And basically what it does, it desaturates the diffuse map to use it as a specular map. But, and I don't know how common this knowledge is, but the desaturation function in UDK if pushed beyond the value of one starts to shift the hue of your subject around so that at the value of two you get the opposite colors and that's really neat because basically you want to have your specular color defined by hand just to set an opposite color to your diffuse map so you could have the warm and cold colors sort of balance each other out as you can see here it's only 60 instructions which is a pretty usual amount for a simple texture but don't forget that this one also has max transparency and as you can see it has only one texture sample which is absolutely awesome for a material like this because before you would need at least three textures for that kind of surface you would need a normal map a diffuse map and an opacity map and here gradient and normal map combo just cover all the bases now if you were making a proper foliage shader you probably want to create some transmission and also bother with the vertex animations vertex offset uh, but here I excluded all this functionality just to give you the gist of what you can do with the basic gradient mapping functionality. So yeah, moving on to the second one, which is called just the proc mat or the, which is short for procedural material. And basically it has a pile of rocks for you, which are kind of mossy and dirty. And this one is also quite nice because this built specifically for gradient mapping technology. And as you can see here in the parameters, we have the four colors. And then once again, we have all the same parameters that we had for our mask texture. 73 instructions which is 13 instructions more than the previous shader and it's basically somewhere in the range of the shaders generally used in games so probably when working with unreal engine you try to keep in between 50 to probably 80 instructions or something for your basic shader is and this one fits quite nicely and i hope as you can see produces some interesting results so let's move on to the next one and this one is actually the copy of the previous one only with some added functionality on top. Now in here you'll find vertex blended sand or you can turn it into moss if you want to. You just have to switch the texture in the blue channel holds the mask for sand but you can replace it for a mask for grass and just color it green and basically you'll have your grass or moss or whatever it is. It also has a separate specular color for you and it finally has a separate diffuse component 
so you can edit your diffuse noise on top separately just the way you want it you can tile it set it intensity as well as brighten or contrast up the diffuse material itself you also now have a detail map a tile a small tile normal map that you are free to tile around just the way you want or increase or reduce intensity and your basic colors yeah so that's about it and so right here we have around 113 instructions which for a shader with such functionality is a pretty nice trade-off I guess and don't forget that you're also saving some time and not having to load all the huge textures you would need otherwise for that kind of material and you save a lot of memory as well yeah so finally our last material it holds all the functionalities the previous shaders have only with added procedural damage generation on top now here you can edit the tiling of the cracks and the and the little chisels and chips off pieces and you can also adjust the color that is in the cracks and you also have your detail map and everything that's about it basically and here you have 156 instructions which sort of seems a lot but if you for example go back and look at the foliage map demo included with UDK the average object has a material with around 160 instructions I guess with all the different kinds of moss that they paint in there and everything and with this shader you get a bit less but also you get vertex painted cracks you get vertex painted chipped off pieces and you get vertex painted sand that is height map blended as well as all the damage and as far as I see it for a shader with such amount of functionality it's a decent trade-off once again but also please uh, don't forget that for personal projects your shaders could be a bit fatter than they would be for a proper production and if some of you would hopefully try to implement this in a real full-scale production pipeline I'm I'm pretty sure that you'll have your technical artists go through this and optimize it as much as they want. And I'm pretty sure there are tons of people way smarter than me who can do this all even smoother, who can make it all run even better. And now let's quickly move on to the Photoshop file included in the package. So, Photoshop, finally. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, now why has this guy brought me to Photoshop? Basically because I wanted to show you guys a more efficient way to produce a gradient mask because when I was sort of trying to figure out how to go about this it seemed like a pretty tedious task because well here you see your height map and now you ha just have to look at it and figure out where to paint what to add your details and everything and it's not really as you know as tangible as comfortable as your diffuse maps so I really wanted to tackle this issue and to make it really obvious how your changes would influence your gradient map later on in game. So what I did, I just went ahead and made a Photoshop file that basically simulates the gradient mapping influence, the normal map influence and the specular mapping influence for you right in Photoshop. So you can see how this whole thing is going to work out way before you are going to export it in engine. So this is tremendously comfortable and saves you a whole lot of time on producing these assets and probably even every kind of asset which is let me show you how these layers work and what they mean so the images can speak for themselves so basically here you see our folder for gradient maps and on the bottom here you can see the height map lying around and then I just add on top a little embed occlusion as you can see it sort of pops up then you can add some hand painting details and as you can see now they look kind of weird but as soon as we turn on the gradient map and it will become pretty nice and right now as you can see I've turned on the gradient mapping. The folder that contains gradient mapping is called the preview and here I have included a variety of different gradients so you can choose for yourself but it's really easy and you can make your own in a matter of seconds it's just as simple as producing your usual Photoshop gradients. So after that you can see on top of the gradients you have a darken layer which is basically just pure black layer set and multiply so you can darken things up so all these layers here they basically represent the shader functionality you'll find in the UDK package included so the next folder is normal map preview and as you can see as soon as I turn it on we can see how the whole thing just pops immediately so here you put all your normal maps your main base normal map then your detail normal map noise on top and here you can see I have a folder for my chisels for my chipped off little pieces and you can see the folder for my cracks and then there's just a little contrast thrown in on top just to make them pop a little more what's neat about this is that you can actually turn around lighting just by flipping the channels of your base normal map so after that we have a layer for your cracks which basically contains the tileable 
which basically contains the tileable cracks texture and the color for your cracks, just like the shader does, and then just the folder for your chisels. And then on top of all of that, you have your diffuse pattern that you would overlay in the shader also. And as you can see, you can basically tile it in Photoshop just the way you would scale your usual images, just to preview the kind of result you're hoping to get. And the final folder we have here is specular, and I, I don't know how aware you are about this, but you can actually preview your specular in Photoshop pretty accurately, eh, well, as well as normal map, basically. And as you can see here, it has a little mask. It has a little mask and a little circular gradient painted in the center, and what you can do is you can select the canvas, then you can hold Alt, and then you just move it around, and... And then what you do is basically move the light around so you can see a specular highlight. Just like you would do it in UDK. And as you can see, the difference is unnoticeable, absolutely. So it's like you're work working with it in UDK. And that's extremely comfortable because you can't really find the material that exists on its own anymore in modern games. And it's tremendously comfortable and time-saving to be able to see your changes sort of in real time on your normal map surface with all your maps applied with spec applied and the generated damage applied and the generated diffuse patterns on top and everything. It just makes for a really, really comfy and smooth workflow. And also just a little something I wanted to add on the example of these rocks is just how amazingly comfortable hand painting details in this mode is. So as you can see here, I have my layer for hand painted detail and then I just select my brush and then as you can see, I start painting with pure black and I just start, you know, highlighting my edges and you can see them pop up immediately and I can see all these changes take shape in real time and as you can see all this sort of moss and dirt that are accumulated there, I can paint them in as well just by, just by changing my color to black and then by applying a little pressure to the stylus on my tablet, I can actually paint all this other detail, the green, the brown and everything and it's basically just a matter of seconds and I can visualize the end result immediately right in Photoshop without exporting anywhere. So that's really fast, really efficient and really fun to do. So I hope you guys find this comfortable and even if you won't be using procedural materials, you can still use this approach to pre-visualize your tileable textures in Photoshop with the normal and specular component to allow you to paint your diffuse map to the greatest level of precision so i guess that's about it i should wrap it up not to stretch it for too long thank you very much guys for your time i can't wait to see all the amazing uses you great people of the internet will find for this technology and if you have any ideas or suggestions or criticism for this kind of technology please please feel free to share because i'd love to hear about it and that was Andrew Maxima for you from artistsverb.info thank you very much for your time guys and i'll see you around cheers, cheers.